Hello, everybody. It is Saturday morning in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. I am a, a tired Adam Bittner, Assistant Sports Editor for Multimedia at the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette, coming off two days of live streaming the NFL Draft down at Mike's Beer Bar. Um, we had a lot of fun, but it, now we're on the other side of it, and there's a bit of a, uh, a fun hangover in terms of the NFL Draft. Jason Mackey, though, is joining me to give his thoughts on day two of the NFL Draft for the Steelers. Jason, you were um, down at, at Mike's Beer Bar early in the night. Um, you said what you thought the Steelers should do, but we never got your reaction to what yep. they did do, drafting Zach Frazier in the second round, Roman Wilson in the third, and then Peyton Wilson later in the third. Um, I guess let's let's start at center, Jason, and, and talk about Zach Frazier, a guy that I know you were high on the Steelers getting if he was available. He does drop all the way to 51. Um, just give me your thoughts on that pick uh, first and foremost. Yeah, and I, I love it, Adam. I really do. Also, just to, to tie back, nobody wants to hear a sports writer complain. All right. I I went through this too. Um, now we're tired, but you know what? It's it's fantastic. Um, it's a really fun event to cover. And, and the Mike's thing was awesome too, do, doing a live stream. Thank you so much to everybody who watched that. But as far as Frazier, um, yes, as we talked about last night, very high on the pick. I'm I'm very high overall on what the pi what the pirates, what the Steelers have done in their draft the past couple of days. Um, I just, I feel like they've addressed every meaningful need. The only box I'd sort of still like them to check is cornerback. I feel like they can do that today. But if you would have told me last night, Adam, that they would walk away with Zach Frazier, Roman Wilson, and Peyton Wilson, I, I would be ecstatic. I would sign up for that in a heartbeat. I'm pretty sure that was actually a discussion between me you and Chris Carter. Like, where do I sign for this? But I love the demeanor of Zach Frazier. I look at him. Um, you know, it, he's somebody you can have for the next 10 years. You would think like this kid is athletic, strong, has a mean streak, is is very capable between the ears, I, I, has a lot of starting experience. I He's somebody, at least at this point, I would trust to go ahead and, you know, you're, you're my guy. You're my guy day one. Learn it. Dominate the position. Like they, they've not had that spot taken care of for the past couple of years and i feel like finally they do and I, i'm just i'm ecstatic with it yeah i think it's it's a it's a great pick and i, I think it helps also end the troy fought uh what is his what is his role going to be it ends that conversation too jason so i think it, it kind of killed two birds with one stone um so i think that's that's kind of an upside of the pick too yeah i mean i don't know maybe that discussion never really got off the ground for me i i just I understand what Omar Khan said about moving Broderick Jones to the left side. I agree with it. I understand what Fatanu is, can be. I love him as an athletic right tackle. I'm great with that. Um, Isaac Sayamalu and James Daniels, guard situation for now, great. Uh, you know, maybe it's a one-year thing and you have to readdress next year, but whatever. You put Frazier down in the middle of that line. I, I, I am I am overjoyed with what they've done, what they've done with the offensive line and as I was saying last night, I just I, I think it's absolutely necessary. You're going to protect the quarterback on the you know back nine of his career in Russell Wilson, or you're going to have to be athletic on the edge with somebody who can move around in Justin Fields. You've got to you obviously want to establish an identity running the ball, which I think they will in Arth with Arthur Smith. I mean, you need guys to give you time up there, and they've done that, and they they've done that without. This was a discussion from last night too, Adam about. Do they move up? Do they give up capital later in the draft? They also got desirable players without giving anything up. To me, that's a, a storyline that's maybe not talked about enough, enabling them to get a really good wide receiver. A, a really, if, if Peyton Wilson can stay healthy, like this is a, a guy that can step in next to Patrick Queen this year, next year, very soon, create some sort of rotation with the Landon Roberts in the middle of the defense. Like, man, I just, I love it. Yeah, that's something we were talking about on the live stream last night was the patience and, and the willingness to let the draft kind of come to them in an offseason where Omar Khan's been praised for being unstealer like and going after Russell Wilson, Patrick Queen, Justin Fields. He does the very stealer thing of, of standing patent, and I, and I think it paid off. And I think you're right to, um, you know, kind of credit him for that, Jason, because, um, you know, it, it would have been easy in a lot of those spots, I think, to, to trade up. Um, yeah. Certainly once Jackson Powers Johnson flew off the board and Zach Frazier's the only center available, maybe you pull the trigger. He says, no, we're, we're pretty confident that we're going to get our guys. So, um, yeah, a lot of credit to him for that. Let's get into Roman Wilson a little bit. He's a guy that I, I would have been happy with in the second round, frankly. Um, they end up getting him 
uh, at the 84th pick in the third round. Um, is there any concern for you, Jason, about the fact that he fell to, to you know, kind of late in the third round? Um, you know, I, I don't think so. And and he, I looked in the camera and said, pick him now um, as we were going into that, that third round pick. The, the Steelers did do it. Um, but we know he's not like the most adept uh, guy at the underneath stuff. He's not going to be kind of Deontay Johnson. He's going to run those intermediate and deep routes well, um, but he's not going to replicate what Deontay Johnson did in this offense. Is that okay for you? Yeah, that's preferable. <laughs> Can you make that promise? Um, I was not a big Deontay Johnson guy. Um, I'm also a bit, and, and oddly, I'm going to link this to Amarius Mims, the tackle from Georgia, where I think what you're doing here is drafting things that you can't coach. Now, with Mims, it's size. With Wilson, to me, it's how you play the position. Hearts, desire, you know, willingness to block, willingness to do all the right things. I think they're getting a guy who's going to be hugely coachable and, and want to learn that position. Yeah, whatever. Uh, going over the middle was not in a, a pass-heavy offense. I, I frankly couldn't care less. Like, he's an athletic kid. You can teach him to do that stuff. You can put him in a position to take advantage of his athleticism, skill, speed, all of that. What I can't always get in the draft is somebody who wants to be a part of the running game, who wants to support his teammates, who wants to – You know, he talked about last night very passionately on the conference call over at Steelers – doing whatever is possible to win to hear a kid talk like that that is something that has not been a part of the culture enough where people are doing whatever it takes to win screw personal stats accolades anything like that you need to win um and so anyway for i i just i love the kid's attitude i love his makeup i'll coach the other stuff i'll worry about the other stuff. i don't even think it's that big of a concern but i just i really like what he's made of his character and uh, true story, Adam. So Pete, you know this, but people watching don't. The way this kind of works out, you know, you, if you're over at Steelers, they bring people in, take them out. You're transcribing. There might be a conference call, whatever. I'm working on a column. Um, I had sort of settled on an idea. I talked to Brian, Ray, and Jerry, make sure that idea was clear. So I start working on my column for the next day. Um, and, and, you know, we're getting around to the Steelers pick. And so I'm thinking like, you know, I, I go back to things that I have favorited, who's off the board, and I'm like, scrolling through them roman wilson where where's where's roman where'd he go where you know and i'm like literally doing a double take thinking how the heck is he not off the board in the third round so it's kind of kind of what you had going on at mike's beer bar I just couldn't believe it yeah i couldn't believe it either and, and i think it's it's great for the Steelers that they were able to scoop him up i also um you know as i said on the live stream last night i think it's okay that he's not like the, the underneath guy the possession guy at least to start his NFL career, maybe he can he can run those routes and learn them in in the pro level. But um, at least in Arthur Smith's offense, Jason, I think the point is to to soften up um, secondaries with the running game to be able to hit those deep shots. And Roman Wilson gives you someone opposite George Pickens that um, is a viable threat for defenses. Yeah, I, and I think that's a hugely important point, Adam. I really do. I, Arthur Smith talked last night, I believe for the first time since he was hired, you know, talking to external media. Um, and there were a lot of questions about what his offense is going to look like. And I think you can go look at his track record, where he's been, and kind of see what his offense is going to look like and what they're going for. And, and to me, the best comp is Tennessee. And I think you you had that. You, you Ryan Tannehill found success by the exact recipe that you're talking about. And you're going to back defenses off with an established running game. Hence why I was so excited about them starting with the offensive line. You know, having Derrick Henry was nice, but just a, a different way to cut the loaf of bread here with Najee Harris and Jalen Warren. It's accomplishing the same thing. Um, you know, and I, I want – one of the things going into this draft that worried me about the wide receiver position is having somebody to take attention away from George Pickens. And I think they've done that with Roman Wilson. They've done that without missing on other important – things you know i.e zach frazier and i even like the inside linebacker pick but you know i do think roman wilson is somebody who's going to be able to take some attention away from george pickens um quez watkins von jefferson or van jefferson excuse me um you know those those are guys that they're not going to be premier number ones but can they command attention can they get targeted legitimately yes i, I think they can yeah, going to be interesting to see how things work out with those guys. I want to talk a little bit about Peyton Wilson. Before we do, just want to thank our sponsor, Pella Windows and Doors of Pittsburgh. There's no better place to get new windows and doors installed in your home than Pella, who can help you save on energy costs year-round. 
Schedule a free in-home consultation with your local Pella Windows and Doors to find the right product for your home and budget. Give them a call at 866-593-1560 to discuss your project further. That's 866-593-1560 to get started planning on your new Windows and Doors installation with Pella Windows and Doors of Pittsburgh. Um, Jason, they go linebacker later in the third round. That was one of those needs that I think we said was was maybe a more peripheral one. You have Patrick Queen in the fold. Um, you still have a Landon Roberts. Maybe not a position you need to draft for this year. Um, they have a need at cornerback, but they decide to go linebacker, and, and I think it's hard to argue with, especially because you know Peyton Wilson's been a guy that's been on the radar as as one of those people that would make you want to pick a, a, a linebacker over a corner. I guess give me your thoughts on on that and. Um, you know, where he can can kind of fit into this defense in the long run uh, once I think, you know, if Cole Holcomb is gone, if Landon Roberts is gone, I think it, he gives them a, a long-term solid one-two punch at that position, which they've sorely lacked, you know, pretty much since Ryan Shazier's injury. Yeah, they really have. Um, and, and you know what? You mentioned Shazier. I'm not going to put him in the camp of, you know, he's like Ryan Shazier, but that's one of the things that I like most about him is how athletic he is. Uh, he can absolutely move. Uh, it, to me, I, I don't know if I'm getting too excited over this, Adam, but I feel like they got a bit of a steal here, all because of this kid's injury history, but it's not injury history. Like He's been healthy for the past two years. Like, 138 tackles last year, 17 and a half for loss, six sacks, nine pass breakups. Like This is an active linebacker who can affect the game in so many different ways. And the Steelers got him in the third round because he was hurt three years ago? Am, am I understanding that? I mean, I'm, I'm, you know, playing to a bit here, but I, I love that this sort of value was available. I, I agree. I wanted them to address cornerback, but if you're telling me Peyton Wilson is there, which he is, like I, I absolutely think that. Um, you may say redundancy in the middle of the defense. Look at last year. It's almost like starting pitching in baseball. You just can't have enough of it. And a talented kid, productive, um, seemingly healthy. I can speak a little bit on the um, character of him. Not that anybody knows him a ton, but like I covered Bryce Wilson, his brother. And I, I did, I, I meant to look this up this morning. It might've been a newsletter and thus not ever emailed out, but I did do a story on Bryce Wilson and how much he's learned from his brother and the two of them sort of working together when Bryce pitched for the pirates. It's a really good family. It is like they're, they're good kids raised, right. Um, respectful. They, they feed off of one another. I actually texted Bryce this morning, try to get him to talk a little bit about Peyton, but I like, I like the character and, and the type of kid they're bringing in. And frankly, that's a sentiment that you can extend to all of the Steelers draft picks, probably a, a bigger discussion. But anyway, you're telling me that sort of production, that sort of talent, all that stuff is available to, you know, pair with Patrick Queen and uh, which McCall it, Alandon Roberts, the name escaped me. I like it a lot. Yeah, and the thing for me, Jason, is that there are still corners on this board going into day three. Right. There's still solid guys you can get. Um, how many of them will fall the Steelers in the fourth round? Um, we'll see. But we, you know, I rattled off a name of I think four or five toward the end of the stream last night. Chris Abrams, Drain, Cam Hart, uh, DJ James. I think is still out there. All guys that I think could be. Um, you know, solid contributors. I think we need to taper our expectations of, of whoever they pick today if they go corner in the fourth round, being like the obvious number two to Joey Porter Jr., certainly any any kind of short order. But I think you, you've you at least given yourself the chance to find someone who can contribute in the slot, um, you know, who, who can contribute in sub packages. And, you know, as, as you get into more sub package football, that's, you know, just as important as, as maybe finding a number two. Yeah, no doubt. And, and... <laughs> This goes back to, I think, what we were talking about earlier and what I think you can say for Omar Khan and Mike Tomlin in this draft is letting the draft come to them and sort of recognizing where there are players of impact, exactly what you're talking about, in day three. And so, yes, I I like that a lot. I love not jumping at something, realizing like, look, Peyton Wilson's probably not going to be around. Roman Wilson's certainly not going to be around. But some corners will still be around. And, you know, I... I don't love the secondary situation right now, but I don't hate it. I feel like they're a nip and a talk away. I'd like I'd feel better if they get somebody who can play in the slot, which I certainly think they can. Um, one thing that intrigues me, Adam, I, I'll get your take on this too, is bringing Patrick Peterson back as one of those depth guys. Like I understand why he might want to pursue a starting option. 
I'm not sure I see him as a, a starting option at this point, but can he be a depth guy? Maybe safety middle of the field type. Like, I don't know. I, I don't hate that. That that's not like the, the one solution that I want to see, but I feel like there are some more subtle things they can do in the secondary that would make me feel better. Yeah, I think I'd be in favor of that, especially because you've you've you know cleared the salary cap space to make a move like that with the uh, Alex Highsmith restructure. If you get um, you know a decent young corner in the fourth round and you get Patrick Peterson, I think you can kind of mix and match how you deploy them. I think we saw that that Patrick Peterson was probably better the less you played him, right? So yeah. if you can ha- dial him down to maybe half the snaps, I think he can still be very effective in in that range and and balance things out a little bit. So. Um, yeah, absolutely. I'd be looking at that move, especially if they go corner in the fourth round. I want to talk about the two sixth round picks, Jason. I think we're getting into kind of bonus dart throw territory. What would you like to see them do with those um, sixth round picks? It, let's just assume they get a corner they like in the fourth. Um, you've, you've addressed most of, of these major needs. Is it defensive tackle, uh, something along the defensive line? Uh, is it another receiver? We talked about that on the live stream last night, possibly double dipping. Yeah. Um, how are you looking at those sixth round picks? The punters. I, I want absolutely no, I'm kidding. Uh, I'd go defensive line. I would. I think that's somewhere I'd like to see them build, build something out. Um, you know, by the way, Mason Smith went way earlier than we thought. I think I had left the live stream. We were talking about him, where we'd take him, and we were like in the third or fourth round territory. And, and what did he go in the second? Something yes. like that. Very yeah, early. Solid, solidly in the second. Yeah. Um, I'd go defensive line. I, I think it's important to get try something succession plan with Cam Hayward and or you know bolster your nose tackle situation. Um, you know, just depth, depth up front there. I I don't I don't see a need for an edge. I don't see a need for an inside linebacker. We talked about secondary. I don't see a need for a tight end. I don't see a need for a lot like I maybe quarterback, maybe, but I, I would much rather see see them. You know, I feel like you can do more damage taking a flyer on a sixth round defensive lineman than you can a sixth round quarterback. What about you? Yeah, I, I think defensive lines where I'm looking and seeing can they finally get one of these guys to to develop. Uh, you know, they've yeah. kind of had some misadventures in the later rounds. To Marvin Leal, uh, Isaiah Loudermilk. Can you, you know, or maybe you, you trade up into the fifth round to get a guy like that? Because I think now you can do that, right? Because you've you've addressed your major needs in in satisfying ways, but. Um, they got to get a, a guy that you don't expect to become a contributor in, in that part of the football field, no um, I believe. So I, I'm right there. I would not mind a quarterback. Spencer Rattler's still out there, I believe. Um, Jordan Travis is out there. You know, you got to start looking to the future at that position at some point. And, and um, I, I think it'd be nice to have someone in house that you like, that you think you can develop while you have the luxury of Russell Wilson and Justin Fields. And, Listen, if you if you get Justin Fields, you know, let's say Russell Wilson gets hurt and, and Justin Fields earns another contract and you're able to keep him around for, for a long time, that's great. But then maybe you have a solid backup to him and you don't have to go out and, and sign someone. Um, there's lots of ways it could work. So I would not mind a flyer on a quarterback. Um, and I, I think a, a receiver would still be good just to, to balance things out. Um, you know, I think it's – I forget how to pronounce his name, the uh, receiver from Georgia, uh, Rose Saint. Um, mm. uh, he's a guy that we've, we've looked at as a possible, you know, kind of lottery ticket. Yeah. You bring up a good point with Rattler and Travis, Adam. Um, you know, I, when I think about quarterback, I think about, you know, they're basically going to get a practice squad guy, number three, and, and maybe I'm too quick to dismiss that, but you know, you, if Wilson doesn't work out, maybe fields isn't around for very long. I, I don't know how likely those scenarios are, but if I have the opportunity to get Travis or Rattler, late you know what that that is a smart thing to consider i mean i don't know if they're going to be around in the sixth round we'll see today but yeah uh, hearing you talk about it i don't i don't i'm not against it as much and, and honestly i mean i think you can probably address all of the needs we're talking about right or yeah you've you know, got at two least picks. three i mean you, three could, fourths you, could get, of them. you could go defensive line and, and still do quarterback or still do receiver so it's not you know an either or situation and yeah, and yeah i mean and listen Brock Purdy, I think, is now the example. It was Tom Brady for the longest time, and and now it's Brock Purdy as an example of you can go potentially find your, you know, if not franchise quarterback, then a, a yeah. quarterback who's not going to mess up your good team. Um, and and I think those guys are both, you know, winners at the college level. Uh, Spencer Rattler has a lot of guts, you know, the way he played at South Carolina. So 
Um, I think he'd, he'd add more than just your average camp arm to that quarterback room if you're able to bring him in. Um, Jason, any final thoughts on uh, the draft so far and, and what's to come? I had one thing I wanted to throw out there just to tie a bow on something. There, It's in our coverage, and you see it out there about Peyton Wilson, um, that he has a, a misdemeanor arrest or an arrest on his record, um, and I'm here talking about his character. And I, I don't feel any differently about that, but that's something I did want to address. Like He was 19 in a bar with a fake ID and a cop finally. Like if if you're going to judge a kid's character based on that, I mean, who among us hasn't been, you know, in a, in a situation you probably shouldn't have been in college and did something stupid. So not passing it by, but not ignoring it. Just wanted to uh, address that. But yes, overall, I really like their draft, Adam, um, as we've been talking about. I I wrote this in my column today, like it's hard to imagine things breaking in a better way for the Steelers, I, you know, the, the way things fell to them, um, the way that they, they, they didn't reach and act in a desperate way. They got guys that I think are, you know, minimal on questions. At least the questions are not, you know, that they're, they're injury questions. They're not like, Oh, can this guy play? Like I look at the four guys and I think absolutely they have talent. They can play. Um, so yeah, just, just overall very encouraged by what they've done. Yeah, and, and, you know, looking forward to seeing how it plays out later today. Um, I'll be brought back later today after those fourth and sixth round picks are in or whatever the Steelers do on day three with Brian Backo. So we will kind of get some reaction to all that, uh, maybe get some of his day two reactions as well. So make sure you subscribe to the channel. Make sure you like this video if you enjoyed it. Help us out in the YouTube algorithm. Going to let Jason go because he's going to head right back to the south side um, to, to recap today. Jason, thanks for stopping by. I'll talk to you soon. Of course. Thank you. Take Thank care. you, everybody, for watching. Take care, everyone. Thank you for checking out this content from Post Gazette Sports. If you watch this video on YouTube, please like the video and subscribe to our channel. For all of the sports coverage the Post Gazette has to offer, visit post-gazette.com.